Hello everyone, Dan 14th Prime here. Wanted to do a video share out today with you guys on the Fans Hobby MB-08. This is the Double Evil, aka Third Party Overlord from Transformers, the Japanese series, mostly Master Force. Big, big, chunky bot here, clocking in at at least over 15 inches just to the top of the head, never mind that shield as well, sticking above. I think a nice mix of tune, toy, sort of inspiration in this figure. They do a lot of nice things of the tune likeness, like the tank on the outside of the legs, the treads behind the back of the legs, the nice flare off the shoulders. Of course, the two Power Master bots. And generally, the color scheme would be inspired by it. No, not perfect. That's why I picked this guy up. He's the counterpart to the MB06 Power Baser. We'll get him out and do a comparison. If you follow me on Instagram, same handle Dan 14th Prime. You've seen this guy in all the various modes already. Bot two alt modes, and in his base mode. So be sure to check out that Instagram, Dan14Prime. Let's dive in and check this guy out. Let's just start off with a bit of tune likeness and inspiration for the deco that you see here. Again, definitely uh, a lot of tune here. I think a lot of toy as well, as was the case with Power Baser. Power Baser was a bit more toy for my personal preferences, uh, but still pretty cool overall. So for Double Evil here, I think... Um, you know, in terms of color, it's all pretty much there in terms of blue, teal, and white. Uh, this crotch section here should probably be blue if you wanted to be a bit more tune. Uh, with just the black being on just a little hips, hip skirt or upper thigh piece. Uh, purple feet down there is right. I, I will say it looks like skis. That's one complaint. The, the feet a bit thin, despite some cool spring action here to kind of give them maybe an eighth of an inch. Uh, wider, but I think they need to do more of that to get the feet wider. It looks like he's on skis. Like the teal up the leg, again, the blue leg, that's all right. I would prefer the crotch to be blue. In the blue, uh, it's not quite as deep, dark of a blue as we got. I would like the Takara Legends version, which went for much more tune accuracy. Again, the purple up on the, the rockets there and the feet as well. Could be a bit lighter if it was going for more tune. But I just mention those things because for me, they, they matter for me. But really for what it is, but the only really complaints I have are, are twofold really in bot mode. One being, again, the feet I mentioned, they need to be wider. Looks like he's on some skis. Need more width down there at the foot. And then up here, I don't think there was choice folds. They needed to be up in the chest area. As you can see here, he's got the Power Masters, which is great. And I'll just close one of these panels. He's got the panels that open up in the chest. They didn't engineer it so you can get them like all the way out, all the way to the shoulder, like what Takara's had done in their Legends line to sort of improve what Hasbro did. You could get it flush. Can't do that here, unfortunately. And what they've done, because there's sort of iterations of Overlord through the cartoon series, they gave him the very cool stylized shoulder, which I like. The flare off the shoulder. That's how he evolved late in the uh, Master Force series. But then the chest panel here basically went away. It was just like blue chest and flare off the shoulder. Earlier it was something more like this looked like it was coming off his chest and flared out a bit. But again, you can't get it flat and you can't get it probably out the way you'd like. I feel like they should have went one or the other. They did both. So you've got the big flaring shoulders and a chest that doesn't open up all the way. I'm tempted to almost pop the pins out of these things and just go with a pure blue chest. I wish they would have made these maybe just like caps that you could just pop off in sort of parts form if you really wanted to get a good tune likeness. Because I'm just not a fan of chest ports like this that, you know, only go like at a, you know, 45 degree angle off the shoulder. So enough of my design complaints. I'm always chasing a perfect Overlord, Star Saber, God Jinrai, etc. And I'm still looking for them. But there's a lot that's really good about this figure. Check out the head sculpt. I think really, really well done. Nice white face. The red eyes just pop. Do like the molding, kind of the crown through the brow. So that looks great. He's got the you know chin goatee sort of thing. Love it. Maybe my other nit while I'm up here that I didn't mention, maybe it's just three things that are imperfect. He's got like no neck. Just like on a ball peg there. Looks like he's got a pencil neck. Looks like his head kind of floats. So they could have done something there to improve that and tied it in a bit better. So I guess that's my third complaint. But when you come down the chest, I think the Power Masters look fantastic. And yes, these guys pop out of here. I get not Mega here and not Giga over here. The little back things actually fold out. So these will help keep them in, but they rotate. 
and then we can close them up. Pretty nice chest panel, some cool designs in there as well. Also in the midsection, he's got you know his gun ports here, and they spring load with the uh, power masters, so you can push those back in. And again, if you wanted to pop them out, once the power masters load in the back here, it just pushes in a spring basically. So you see that pop out, you see that pop out. Pretty cool gimmick, much like the toy. But overall here, still a, a nice dark blue that I like, and I, I do like the white, a little bit of off-white, some gray accenting, things like that, and a lot of finer detailing, things like this that you'll find through the different modes as well. We come downstairs here, that Decepticon logo, of course, I have placed it there. It's just a purple square there, basically. Kind of odd that it was just purple. Probably could have made that white, but in any event, I've just stuck a giant Decepticon sticker on his crotch, because that's where that belongs. But nothing too special, upper thigh, then you get lower legs here, which of course will just part um, to be the tanks. Uh, you know, looks nice. And the teal looks good. And you get all this, you know, danger, some nice line work, some nice molding, accent paints, things like that, which look really good in the tank mode. The tanks, you know, kind of chunky off the sides, but it's a big, big bot at over 15, you know, 15 inches. So it doesn't look uh, too bad or too wonky. And then my number one complaint, the skis. Profile here, really just, you know, some big arms and things like that. It's going to be the, the jet mode. Get some wing kibble on the side of the arm, you know, to be expected. They fold up as best they can. So pretty big because it's just an enormous plane when it's all said and done. You get the arm out of the way, though, nice and smooth through the, you know, side of the midsection there, the hip. Pretty clean. And then just, you know, the, the big tank turret on the side of the leg. I will say, well, I've got him like this. It's not great stability. He's big. He's got heft. Don't get me wrong. He's massive. I feel like maybe ankle joints, ankle joints, and and somewhere in the thigh or hip. I mean, he gets a bit of just like wet noodle syndrome. See that? You see that kind of flip around, flop around. Not perfect stability. A little kind of like wobbly and sways because of just the mass across such a long frame. So it could be a bit tighter. Back of the figure here, you got the plane wings kind of folding up. Uh, not too bad. I don't, I don't think the backpack is, is bad at all. And then when you jump downstairs, I mean, I, I love this. I love the, the tank treads around the back of the leg like that. Classic G1, so I'm really happy with how they put the lower legs together in the tank modes and transformation. Again, skis. Oh, those look bad from the back. You do get a bit here as well. You get the tank barrel kind of folds in here. There are some cool things with kind of things that hide away, still away slide out on rails so we'll see some of that in the transformation just the big massive shield over here you know from the plane uh, that i'll just give you a show there and again decepticon logo on the end is third party sticker that i've put there and i will show you up here on the shield and he comes with other stuff you know that, that can be stowed like this robot arm some rockets a plank we'll get into them they can all be stored on the the bot mode here but i just I don't like it. It doesn't work well, so I just leave them off to the side. But the plane head here uh, just slides out right there. You get some grooves there, some grooves right there. You know, a little bit of hook there, a little bit of notch there. So that's how you put that on the shoulder. Pretty straightforward. Holds really well, too. I'm going to give you a sense of scale here. I've got uh, the Magic Square figure there, you know, MP10 size, let's call it. Barely coming up to Double Evil's crotch. So it just gives you a sense of how big... This 15 inches looks like. And here he is next to Power Baser, which is big guy himself, at close to about 13 inches. And you can see the room to grow that's going to need to happen once they get their God Bomber out uh, to get the full God Jinrai combination to match up with Overlord. That'll be cool to see. These guys are just some big, big, chunky bots, these guys. Big, fun. You know, they come off looking more as like toys, I would say. They get most of their color from the plastic. There's not a lot of paint. Transformation tends to be simple. So things not really in line with where we see Masterpiece Trends heading. But still, these guys are a lot of fun, just what they are. Big, big, chunky Transformers. One accessory worth looking at here is his gun. It comes uh, all nice and packaged up. It sort of transforms, stores away in tank mode, which is cool. We'll see that soon. But handle flips down. It's got a little, little rail groove system that'll go in the palm. Flip that piece down. and you can pull this out and get like that. Make sure you pull it all the way out. Nice silver trim down there. You can see it compared to uh, Power Basers, one of Power Basers' guns. It's still a bit smaller. See how big Overlord is? It feels like the gun could still be a bit bigger. And then again here, just kind of rail on the back of the hand, which I like this system. 
keeps everything nice and secure. Hold that just like that. And you can see, I mean, it er, still looks a bit, a bit too small. Then you can take a look at it from the front. One gimmick here with the Overlord Shield is you can just have it off your shoulder, pull out a little handle here, give that a twist, and he can just hold the shield. And that same rail mechanism as the gun is in there on the, in, on the handle of the shield as well. In terms of articulation with this guy, I think overall it's pretty good. I mean, head you can look down a bit, you'll flip back and you can look up, and it just spins on a ball peg there. So head articulation is good. The shoulder here, it's going to go up like that. So that's pretty good. Nice ratchet, you know, it's going to spin around. Maneuver the backpack. It's got a bicep swivel here. Good 90 degrees. It looks like it should do a bit more. You have to kind of get the plastic pieces just right, but there you go. Good elbow. It's got a bicep swivel up there. Then the fingers here, the hands, all individual articulated fingers, three pins. So you get like all the finger articulation that you need there. Across each of those, and then the ball peg on the thumb with just one knuckle, one pin for the thumb. Yeah, just handling the guy. I mean, it's like, yeah, he needs stiffer ankles and probably hips. Uh, the waist is good, rotates. Let's get a bit of a little crunch thing here, which is cool. See that? Just a little bit of forward crunch back up. That's cool. I think on this side here, even, even with the, uh, you know, big airplane off the side, it's, it, it's all there as well. Nothing particularly more obstructed other than just making sure this isn't knocking into something. For the legs then, get the arms out of the way. So you get about like this, it seems like, about like that with the splits. Gonna kick out really good like that. Same kicking back and you get some hip skirts here that help with all that movement. Then up here he's got thigh swivel up there. The knee is really good, double joint knee. And then the ankle down here again, I think it rocks both ways pretty well. Pivots up like that, pivots back like that. Pretty good. So yeah, I think overall, as you saw and as you can see here, a big bot, you know, but once you get all the articulation in and get him posed down, he does do quite a bit. Here's again, and again, I'll just say, you know, the couple, the, the wet noodle thing, it's just, there's a couple areas where ankles was one. It's, again, some of these joints, tighter ratchets doesn't always hold the weight. All right, guys, let's start to break this guy down and get him in some more manageable shots here because getting this guy all in frame is a chore. It's massive. Let's pop out our Power Masters one more time here. Close this up. Again, I'm not storing any stuff on them, rockets or the claw arm or anything. I want to just come down here inside a thigh. There's a button. Press that button, and you just pop off a leg. Same thing over here. Button. Pop off a leg. And the shoulder over here, which I already showed you, but just slide that off. So we've got them broken down into four major pieces. So let's check out the the Power Masters here. This would be the girl Mega. And can we just take a moment and give it up to Mega? And yeah, I bet she uh, opened a lot of young Japanese boys' eyes to the possibilities. But yeah, cool piece here, nice nice gold accent there across the front, and primarily black. Got the teal there, gold accents. Gold face, red eyes, looks cool. Kind of transforms like, like we see all these do, no matter who makes them. Just kind of folds up. Articulates out like that. Again, they've got like thigh, knee articulation, that's about it, shoulder. So there you've got uh, Mega, nice done. All black with the gold accents, I think it looks good. And then here in white and silver, we've got Giga. Gonna check him out. So same deal. And it looks good. Got black thighs, you know, the white shins, silver feet, teal chest with the silver trim, silver face, red eyes. You can check the two of them out. Let's take our main overlord body here and make the the big jet. Um, you can store a panel back here. I haven't done it, but if you would, 
if you would have stored this or a part of it back here, you pull that off. Let's get the wings just extended out so they peg onto the side of the arm. Just flip those all the way out. So this panel flips out and it pulls off the arm. When we come around the back of the arms here, you can lift up this panel here. And then you just flip in the hand here. And watch the thumb so it doesn't get stuck down there. Put the thumb on there, flip out the turbine engine. Close this panel down. And then just give this a bit of a twist down. See how it's very high? So you want to twist it so it comes more to the center of the ship. And you'll know there's a peg here when you've gone far enough that pegs right back up there. And down like this. Same thing over here. Pop that open. Flip back the hand. Kind of set the thumb over there. Flip out the engine. Push that down. And it'll be very high up, so just give it a twist so it comes down. And again, you'll get a little tab here when you're all the way around that pegs up into the white arm, and you close that up. Inside of these arms here, there's panels. You can flip those out, flip down to the landing wheel, close that back up. Same thing over here. Wheel comes out, close it back up. We want to get the shoulders uh, back down. So up here, we want to make sure the Purple piece is unpegged from the top of the shoulder. You want to unpeg this top shoulder piece. And then you can just slide this down. Like so, and it's going to latch right there into the lower piece. Right there. And then you can put that back up. And then when you come back to the front here, you can just kind of get the arms flush there. Push that down. And there's little locking mechanisms. So make sure those sit right in there. You want this to be up towards the top, actually, rotated towards the top. There you go. Flush to that. Again, let's do the other side here. Lift up this panel. Slide down the shoulder piece here. Again, on the side of the arm here, it kind of locks over there. Close this panel back up. And again, or the purple, you want to swing it down flush here. Should have some pegs there. And then if we come back around here, there's some panels. Let's kind of open this back up. This panel will slide down. And you want to latch right on top of that there. It can sometimes be a pa pain. I just find kind of coming to the inside and just giving it a little lift. And pulling it down is the easiest way to get that locked in. And then just put it right back down. So you can slide it down. Probably get your hand inside there and just give it a little lift to get over that little hump. There you go. Just like that. And again, flush down the side, flush down the side. If we come then around back here. You want to just unwind all of this backpack. Double, just hinge it out like this. You can flip up the fins like that. Take the, the gun, just pull that off. And around back here, when you flip this panel down, there are some pegs that will go in these back leg joints. Got to get these positioned correctly. And those will peg right up in there. Then last thing here, let's just uh, give the head a spin around. Then let's grab the front of the plane here. Very white underneath here. The light's blasting that, but let's close up our panels like this, and open up here. But back here, we want to get the front landing gear out. And here we just want to put these together. Uh, so there's a couple things, little latches here that are going to go here, here and here, little latching mechanisms, and then the main tab is right there. I want to be high enough to start off that that's going to get your latch in there. And you can just give a little push down to get those in. There we go. And then the one thing I do like to do with the plane, it comes with four of these little rockets, and they just peg in. They just tab in. I have to say, I don't, I don't love it. It's very delicate. They don't really stay that well. But it is a nice accent. Uh, so it gives you a sense of what that looks like. And let's not forget lastly here, grab the gun, which I had around the back 
of Overlords, and you can pull it out, get these nice silver barrels, and plug that right back there. And of course, here you could open up the cockpit. Steering wheel kind of lifts up. Give it a little leg room. And you can put Mega in there. The interior is cool. Probably hard to see. I get you some look at that interior. Kind of some nice, they say like uh, metal panels in there. And there's some stickers that this figure comes with. Some of which go into those fine interiors. Which I haven't messed with. But looks pretty good in there. Grab Mega, set her in there. Close her up. The area of the jet, I think is massive. 16 inches long. I think it might be the coolest part of the set overall. The alt modes are really cool. Very playable. Front on view there. The fins look really nice in the back. The gun on top there. Cool signature kind of orange tinted windshield. You know, just all the black with the, the white jet engines with the purple signature, right? I've got my little Decepticon logo there. Placed myself. And the back end view here. Again, it looks cool too. All those kind of look like rockets all in the back. Those four engines. That comes together pretty sweet. I'll just try to give you a bit of up close. Again, not like tons of detail and stuff in here. Like I said, it's not like really masterpiece level of detailing and paint and stuff, but you see some older detail. Silver paint accents through there, through here. Nice yellow windshield there. And I've already showed you the inside of the cockpit with some nice detail. You get some of these types of signature warnings, danger, stuff like this going on. I like all the use of the fins and things like this across the top. The gun looks really good up there. The engines, again, more of these little accent details. Silver paint, some purple off the, off the tail there. Underneath, eh, you know, it's always Overlord, so it's kind of like, okay, it's a robot underneath a plane. So you get that a little bit, but not terrible. They'll plug in accents with the rockets there. And again, just long white underside of the airplane. So like I said, simple, right? Not too complex transformation, but still pulls off a pretty cool look. So I've got the left leg here. Uh, so grab this, and there's some cool sliding systems, things like this. Start with the thigh, just kind of slide that over there. Come down to here, the little piece of trim plastic on the side. Flip that out. Again, slide out the tank treads. And then flip this one up. And you'll notice some pegs here, peg in the back. Peg right here in the middle. And you even get, you know, double hinge there, a bit of a click up here with this trim piece. Come around the tank turret side, you can just pull that off and pull it out. Come around the bottom of the foot, let's flip in the heel. This is toe fill piece, flip that in. Flip the heel off the bottom and just kind of wrap it around the front of the foot. Give it a spin. Bring it down a little bit if you need to. Give that a spin. And I just squeezed in my tank tread there. But you're just gonna slide that right up in this gap. There's a little spring-loaded piece here. Gives the foot just a bit of width. It needs more. Um, so push that in and slide that on up like that. We come back around this side here. Flip off that panel and pull all this forward. It'll slide down into there. Wrap around and peg underneath. Then if we come here, you know, this piece might be kind of flapping around, which is fine until you get it all together. This piece, let's get this on pegged and that'll hinge out like this. And there's a panel underneath there to flip that out. And then just bring this down. We're just going to bring some panels together here so that'll snap there, snaps there. There's a peg in here on the blue. So it's right in here. So you just need to kind of get this bent at the right angle so that that peg goes in. And then tank tread will peg right in there into the green panel as well. And if we come back up top, just want to slide that down, rock this in and push it in like that, and it will peg right there. And then here, let's flip out the big gun barrel. I might call this left leg. This is this is right leg. Sorry if I called it left leg at the beginning. And we've got half the tank there. 
Then here, kind of same thing. This is the left leg. Uh, so again, let's slide in the thigh, flip in the heel, flip back the toe piece, pull up the heel, wrap it around, again, spin it. Push out the tracks like this, flip out your trim plastic, flip out your turret, flip up your plastic heel. And here, of course, let's get things pegged in with the blue pegs back middle. And again, you can kind of peg the trim piece, but it doesn't really hold until everything comes together. We come around the front here, pull down all this, rock that on there. And again, it's just gonna wrap around. And then this piece here, pull it up, rock it back, flip out this panel, little side panel here. Small difference versus the other leg. So flip that out. And then just bring that, bring that on down. And that'll peg right there. Same thing, got to kind of get this back piece bent at just the right angle to peg it in the trim piece. It's one of your main pegs. And then as well, the turret into the green piece. There we go. Then here, let's take the, uh, the top turret section, peg it, slide it up, push it in. So you take the length out, rock it in. And there's two pegs right there. So there we go. Then when you're putting these together, uh, the gun comes back into play. I'll fold it up. Square peg here. And that's going to peg in and sort of sit over the top of this teal panel. Like that. And when you're bringing this side, you'll have a round peg on it. And it will just peg into there. The main tabs are here in the middle of the body. You get some serious tabs in there. Make sure that's all lined up. There's your main tabs. Heard those click for sure. There's that. Make sure our panel's closing that off back there. Close that up right there. Pegs around the top. You know, pegs in the front. Just get it all together. That's it. One more thing here that, I don't know, I, I find it's worth doing. Is that we'll go ahead and come underneath and then just store this here. Just kind of cleans up the bottom of the tank. So a couple lead pegs right up there. A couple right here. And then in the back and like the gun. So you can get that pegged away underneath. Then here, you, know, you open up the tank. Pretty slick in there as well. We'll try to see the inside of that. Some silver paint. See those nice like steel. I think it said like stainless steel kind of trimmed in there. The dash and everything. Pretty nice inside of both of these things. And again, some fine detail decals you could put in there if you were so inclined. Put Giga down in there. Give him a steering wheel. Close that up. And this thing's only about 10 inches, uh, not counting the barrel. So it actually fits on my turntable. And check them out here again. All the teal comes through on the tank uh, beautifully. You get that teal in the back like you should. The blue, the white turret, the purple barrel. Some teal up here in the front. And I've got, I put those Decepticon logos on myself. Something here, which I haven't had any luck moving. You do get a little rocket port, pops out right there. So a lot of playability. And again, all these finer details, different things, danger, molded in back there, painted on, I should say. So yeah, these alt modes, I think, are really, really cool. And I'll show you this up close. You know, not, again, not tons of detail in here, but they make good use of it. It's kind of have these like armored panels. And some white accents through here. Trim back here, all this detailing. I think the turret looks really cool. Silver trim here, some vents, you know, gray paint. There's a lot of stickers as well. You could put on this if you wanted to. The barrel, front of that thing, caution. This thing here, er, looks like it should rotate, but I haven't any luck and I don't wanna break it. A little missile port or something there. But yeah, this thing closes up really nice. 
I think that looks really good. I think it's solid. Rubber tr uh, treads. I I don't find them like uh, there. It's moving. I've sort of haven't all had the best luck with them. Uh, you know, moving when I try to push it on the ground. It's a bit better now, but you know they're there. They work, but I don't find myself just being able to put it on the ground and push it and like the treads work. See, Urgh, trying that right there. It's it's not moving. So let's see here, this little rocket launcher up there. It'd be cool if they gave you little rockets or if they just filled those with something, like there was rockets in there. Accents here, again, signature orange. You know, that's gonna rotate about like that and like that each way. So probably like, you know, 45 degrees each way from center. The nice ratchet. And then the turret here goes down a bit and up a bit. But yeah, I really, uh, really dig the alt modes. Now, in terms of the jet and tank combining, there's nothing in the instructions and uh, clearly no tabs on the tank and no tabs inside of the chest of the jet. So can't really uh, can't really do it and can't really set them up on top of each other that well either because of this on the tank. Something like that is probably the best look you can get. And you can see that's not exactly great. I'm not surprised they don't combine though. The tank is one and a half pounds and the jet is two pounds. You're talking three and a half pound overlord figure when that thing's all put together. Because of the weight, I can understand why you wouldn't let them connect to hang, but it would have been cool if they could have at least been posed that way on the on a surface, if only for looks. But unfortunately, it looks like that's a no-go. So last up here, let's go into base mode. We just take off the gun here. And we want to separate the front of the plane. And there's a button here difficult just because it's so big but push that button I'm probably gonna need to do it behind a camera oh, there we go break that lock and then just remember you got some downward hooks there so don't break those close that up and then up here as well wheel up and close this up and if we start working with this piece here let's swing the arms up so they'll kind of unpeg from right there and then you can swing them up and your rockets are probably gonna fall off, which is fine. So swing these up, you can unpeg, swing up. Still away the wheels. Let's fold up the flaps here, so down. Our last rocket off there. There's a peg there, and then you can flip the flap up. Or this side again, straight down, flap up. If we come back here, it's kind of a kickstand. You can flip out right there. That'll help just kind of level them. And if we come under here, we want to unpeg this from the legs, come underneath. And he's got some of his uh, bridge panels, so flip those out. And it's a double panel. So unfold it and pull that out. Panel unfold it. And then just put it right back and remember pegs there. Then if you take the tower I have in this hand, which you can't see. But we're just gonna peg it in. There's pegs here. We're gonna peg it right there. We've kind of got this set up now. Then if we come back to our tank, take off our panel, which we'll need here. Now split the tank back apart. So I really have a hard time with these, these tabbed pegs. So I was just using this plastic ruler. It's like wedging it down in there uh, to get those to pop. So let's start off with the uh, turret side. So if we take this half of the tank here, let's fold in the gun turret, of course. Let's pop up the top of the turret and flip out this little blue panel up here. And I find you just gotta give the slide, slide it up just a bit, because there's a peg up here. You want in the top hole that just came out of that blue panel. You have to kind of find the right distance. There you go. Come underneath here. A couple of uh, pegs you can flip out of the blue stuff there. And while we have this, let's also flip up this panel. 
and just pull out this accessory piece that we need, like a radar dish. And you can close that back up. Similar with the other leg here. I'm going to pop this up, flip out the blue panel. This needs to slide up like, you know, an eighth of an inch or something. Be able to hit this top peg. Come around inside the blue, flip out these two pegs. And then let's come back around here. And if we flip up this panel, another radar looking dish thing, let's pop that out. Then in terms of getting this together, got a little hole back here. Turret side in, and it pegs into the ramp. And same thing over here. All right, reviewing stuff this big's never fun. A uh, ramp here, peg right there on the black. You can take the gun here, put tab that in right there, and open up the middle section here. And there you got another big gun where you can pull out the barrels, raise the handle up. You can take the rifle, plug that in there as well. And it can pivot, pop up your rocket launcher. Then of course you can put your radar dishes up on top. It also comes with this utility arm. And inside this panel, there's a, a little black nub. If you prop that up and then that will just peg onto there. And then as well, you could put the rockets back on the sides of the wings. And here we have the Overlord base in all its glory. Gun, gun, claw, rockets. Put your little guys around it, no peg holes or anything like that. Get a little ramp here. Gun in the middle. You know, with the radar dishes, got some rockets accenting off. And of course, the big, tall tower. Very, very cool. And sorry, not perfect here, but try to get you a little bit of a side view of what that looks like from the profile. And we'll just come in. So, you know, it's just the combination of the two. So all those tank details, you know, reminiscent of what we've seen. This plugs into the jet there. It's like the body of the jet. Then the nose just facing up. Pretty typical. Nice accents with the rockets and the tower. You know, I like the, I like the wings flaring up there like that. Over here. You get some guns with the rockets and everything. A little claw arm, you know, it articulates, closes, whatever. So it's a pretty cool base overall, I have to say. So you have it, guys. Fans, hobbies, MB08. Double evil. Big, chunky robot. I think a lot of fun. Really my own design complaints. Needs wider feet. Needs a neck. His head just kind of floats. Some of the joints need to be stiffer. Probably like ankle and... Maybe knee and thigh there, because he does have a bit of wet noodle syndrome, and some of the joints don't hold the weight in certain poses. And then personal critique would be, you know, with the chest-shoulder combination, I, I wish they would have, like, chosen something. You know, to get a panel here that goes flat, and maybe would flip out and do some of the shoulder accenting, or just use the shoulder and just square off the chest nice and blue all the way around. So they give us both, and it looks a bit uh, busy because of it. But on the good side, massive, I think good value for money for the price, kind of like 225 bucks. Alt modes are fantastic. Base is very cool as well. Transformation, though not complex, I think is slick enough. Makes good use of rail systems, panels, things like this. Hideaway parts. So happy with it overall. It's fun. You know, it's a fun piece. It's not on the masterpiece caliber scale per se, but still a lot of fun for what it is. It's just a big, chunky overlord. All right, guys, thanks for checking in. See you next time.